we always talked about what we would do in, in our school district, as you guys do too, what would we do in the case of an active shooter? And every time we started talking about a lockdown, every time we started talking about getting underneath the desk, we would look around the table with the other principals and the superintendents, and we'd look at each other and just kind of shake our heads. There's just no way we're going to sit there and wait to be victims. But we had no training. But we knew instinctively that that's not the way to go. We weren't going to sit there and wait for someone to come and shoot us. So uh, the Newtown, Connecticut incident happened. It shook everybody up. We found a training up north. We went to the training. We took that training back to our school district. We redeveloped it. And uh, then we brought it to the STAT task force. We in Kern County do not want to be victims. This course that you're going to go through today is in two parts. Part number one is the classroom setting where we're going to give you the theory. We're going to give you some debriefing on some of the shooter incidences. We're going to give you some techniques. Part two in about two hours is going to be a live simulation where we have a bad guy that will be Mr. Wyrather who is armed with airsoft guns. You will be in teams, you'll be communicating with each other, and you'll be going through a live simulation being shot at. Okay, And that's the second part. The goal is for you to be able to take this back to your school districts if it is approved by your boards, and I can't stress that enough, if it's approved by your boards, and then train your schools. Okay. I want you to take a look at this quote. I won't be reading everything on, on the screen for you, but the high idea behind this quote with Teddy Roosevelt is when you're faced with a decision, you got to do something. When a bad thing happens, you have to do something. The worst thing that you can do is do nothing. This training is set up to give you a set of tools that you can choose to use and then gives you permission to use those in that setting if the bad thing happens and a shooter does come on your campus. This is a very simple concept. You have the option, if faced with a shooter intruder on your campus, to alert, to run, to hide, or to fight. That's all you have to remember during this entire training. Let people know what's going on, where the shooter is. If you can run, run. Get away from the bad guy. If you can hide, hide. Barricade down, that's a, that's a viable option. If you have to, and you are faced in a life and death situation, fight. As we start to take a look at a few of the shooter events in our recent history, we're going to go into detail with the Blacksburg, Virginia. That's the Virginia Tech. We had 33 deaths there, 25 injuries. We have the DeKalb, Illinois incident. Uh, we had six deaths and 21 injuries. We have the Oakland, California event, seven deaths, three injuries. Our two most recent ones were Newton, Connecticut, Sandy Hook Elementary, 27 deaths, two injuries, and Taft, California, two injuries. Let's take a look, if we can, at the Oakland, California incident. Uh, because this, this, this uh, illustrates a very interesting point. In Oakland, California, it was a private college. A, general, a, a bad guy came onto the campus and he told the other participants in a lecture hall, line up against that wall and I'm going to shoot you. That was his command. What happened? They lined up against the wall and they were shot. This illustrates the point that we do what we're told to do. We are compliant people, especially in education. We train to do one thing, we drill to do one thing, that's what we're going to do. If someone with a gun comes in and tells us to stand up in a wall, against the wall and wait to be shot, that's what happened. The reason why this is important is for the last 30 years at least, we have been training people to do one thing in the event of a shooter intruder, and that is lockdown. Lockdown means you lock the door, you turn off the light, you get underneath the desk, and you wait. That's all it tells you to do. Lockdown, wait. We've trained, drilled, and practiced to do that. These people who are shooters, and you'll see this with more debriefings, know that that's the way we're trained. They know where the targets are when they come into the building. We have to train our people to do something more than just line up against the wall to be shot or wait underneath the table to be shot. As we take a look at this, I want you to just remember some simple math. Minutes means life. 
in any active shooting incident, it takes one to 12 minutes for the initial response from police, uh, from police department. One to 12 minutes. SWAT team response will be unlikely during this incident unless it's in transitions. We have hostages, barricades, or suspect, or standoff. But it's gonna be a one to 12 minute response. Take a look at the other statistic. In an average shooter incident, we have two to four people shot per minute. This training is designed to, to el not eliminate targets, but to limit targets. Not to eliminate carnage and death, but to limit it. There is no, there is no system, there is no technique, there's no training that we can give you that will guarantee that everyone will be safe. What we do is we give you tools to use to train your people so that they can extend that time of safety for the first responders to come on campus and take out the threat. I want you to know that as we've been talking to police officers throughout the, the county, that they've told us that even if they are off duty and they get the call that there's an intruder shooter on campus and they are there, they will enter the campus to take out the threat. I want you to think about that for a second. If somebody who's a parent of your, one of your kids on your campuses is driving by or they're in the neighborhood and they hear that call, they're going to enter your campus, they're going to scale the wall, they're going to drive through the wall, and they're going to take out that threat. Because they know that this mathematical equation is true, that every two to four minutes someone's going to get shot. It's going to take one to 12 minutes for that initial response. They want to cut down that time as, as much as they can to take out the bad guy. And their job is one, and that is to neutralize the threat. Take him out. It's over. We've been preparing for danger in our schools forever and ever. Some of you guys are old enough, to, I think, to recognize this picture. This is where we trained our little kids in the 1960s to duck underneath desks in case of an atomic war. We know, of course, that's not going to work but it was something that we trained our kids to do. We didn't know how to do anything else. You'll recognize this, this, film, this slide over here to the right because this is just your standard fire drill. Anytime we have a fire drill on our campus and on your campuses, we make sure that our kids are lined up in nice little neat little rows and we make sure that we can count each person in the line. What we're going to train you today and give you the option to do today is to throw this model right here, throw this model out the window. When you get to evacuate today in the live simulation, you're not going to be evacuating your building in nice, neat little lines. You're not going to be training your students and your teachers to evacuate in nice, neat little lines. You're going to be training them to evacuate and get away from the threat. How do we prepare our kids for this? You'll recognize um, this, this slide from, from uh, the news uh, uh, coverage of the incident in Taft. We want to make sure that we give you options to use in case uh, the bad thing happens on your campus. In any incident where you're in danger, every human being has three natural responses. You're going to either evacuate, flee, you're going to freeze, hide, or you are going to fight counter. It's going to happen every single time you're in danger. It could happen all three of those uh, responses by one person or each person may take a different response. Whether you're trained or not, these are the three responses that are going to happen. It's ingrained in you as a human being. Right now we're going to uh, play for you a uh, 911 call from Patty Nielsen. Patty Nielsen was a teacher in the library in the Columbine incident. We remember when that happened. This is an actual recording of what happened, and what I want you to really be paying attention to is she followed her training. She followed the training of lockdown, duck and cover, wait for the shooter. Jefferson County 911. Yes, I am a teacher at Columbus High School. There is a student here with a gun. He has shot out a window. I believe one of you has shot. Um, um, I've been Columbine High School. I don't know what's in my shoulder. If it was just a last thing to do, but... Um, okay, has anybody been injured, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the school is in a panic, and I'm in the library. I've got students down. I want to get 
table's head. Head's under the table. Um, can I screaming? I'm the teacher. Um, are, you know, trying to take control of it. We need police here. Need okay. Police. We're getting them there. Please Who is the student, ma'am? I do not know who the student is. Okay. I saw a student. I thought I was in hold. I thought. Okay. I was on hold. I saw a gun. I said, what's going on out there? And he said, that was probably for video production. He told me a joke. I said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. And I went walking outside. I couldn't even dance. <laughs> See what was going on. He turned the gun straight at us and shot. And my God, the window went out. And the kid standing there with me, I think he got hit. Okay. Something on my shoulder. Okay. We've got help on the way, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. Stay in the line with me. Oh, God. Okay, do, stay down. do we know where he's at? I'm sorry? Do we know where he's at? He, okay. I'm in the library. He's upstairs. He's right outside of here. He's outside? He's outside of this hall. Outside of the hall or outside? In the hall. Outside. Okay. There are alarms and things going off. There's smoke. My God, smoke is like coming into this room. Okay. okay. I've got the kids under the table here. I don't know what's happening in the rest okay. of the building. Most of them are smoking the building. I don't know. I'm sure someone has to be calling 911. Yes, yeah, we've got a lot of people on. Okay. I just want you to stay in the line with me. We need to know what's going on. Okay. Okay. I am on the floor. Okay. And you've okay. got the kids in the there. And I've got every student in this library on the floor. You've got to stay on the floor. Is there any way you can lock the doors? Um, smoke is coming in from out there, and I'm a little okay. bit. The gun is right outside the library door. Okay. I don't think I'm going to go out there. Okay. You're at home in my high school. I got, I got three children. Okay. We got it. Okay. Um, I'm yeah. going to go to the door to shut the door. Okay. I've got the kids on the floor. Um, I got all the kids in the library on the. We have paramedics, we have fire, and we have police on route. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes. I mean, he's, I, I don't know, I can't believe he's not out of bullets. He just keeps shooting and shooting and shooting. Okay, yeah, we've got a police officer on scene. I thought it was. Okay, just try and keep the kids in the library calm. Yeah. Is there any way you can block the door so no one can get in? I do, I do not. Okay. I, yeah, I guess I can try to go, but I mean, he's right outside that door. I'm afraid to go to the door. That's okay. That's where he is. I'm afraid okay. to go there. Okay. That's okay. Okay, I told the kids to get on the floor. I had to get under the table. All of the children are on the floor under the table. Um, um, yeah, they're all under the table. Okay. And, and as long as we can just try and keep... No one's saying a word. Okay, as long as we can keep everyone there as calm as we can. I hear some yelling out there going on right Yeah, now. we've got alarms going off now as well. Yeah, there's alarms. This room is filled with smoke. Okay. Okay. Keep everyone low to the floor. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's up. Okay. Everyone stay on the floor. Stay on the floor. Stay on to the table. Um, okay. I, I don't know. I, okay. I know. Just, I don't know. I didn't. I said, what, what is that? He shot. He was outside at the time. And, and, and um, I was on call duty. I'm going to tell God. Um, he's, he's, trying, he's like, yeah, woo -hoo -hoo. Mm -hmm. I know. Are getting shot off. I do not know who the student was. I don't even know. I saw him. He was wearing black. He didn't look very large. Um, male student. Um, he was out there shooting. It looked like he was climbing out and shooting. And somebody, I said, yeah. what is that? Mm -hmm. I said, what's going on with this? This is a cat It's probably for video production. You know, they have these video right. And the kids, the kids say, well, that's not, you know, a play gun, a real gun. I was going out there to say no. Mm -hmm. And I went, well, I said, oh, my God, that was really close. That's just out of Okay. I'm really, 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 What's your name, ma'am? Patty. Patty? Okay. Oh, I don't I have him in the library shooting at the student, but I have him in the library on the phone. Okay, try and keep as many people down as you can. Do you know who he is? Okay. Klebold and Harris had a two-fold goal like every intruder shooter. This is an important concept. Number one, 
kill as many people as they can in the amount of time that they have. That is the number one goal, body count. Number two was to die. That is the goal, the twofold goal of every intruder shooter that comes on campus. I do not want to dismiss what Patty Nielsen went through. I do not want to diminish her response. She did what she was trained to do. She told her kids to do what she was trained to tell her kids what to do. It was a, a, a point of training. It was a point of drill. But there was some real ineffectiveness in this response. Number one, she was not thinking tactically. Think this through for a second. She sees two people coming into her campus. They have guns. They are dressed in black. And she thinks it's a video production. She hears guns fired. She thinks they're cap guns. That shouldn't be going on in campus. That shouldn't be happening. You shouldn't be having a video production that looks like this. This is her thought process. Because in her world, this could never happen on her campus. When she finally realizes that people are dying, people are getting shot, she did the next thing that she was trained to do, which was to tell all of her kids, duck down, be quiet, be still. Patty actually, we'll take a look at this map, actually was in this area right here, behind this counter, up inside some cupboards. Klebold and Harris come along these routes right in here in between the stacks of books and in between the tables and chairs where children are ducking under waiting to be killed. The interesting part about this map is if you'll take a look right up through this area right here, this is the door to safety. That's the door out to the parking lot where the SWAT team was already assembled, where the police department was there. This is where those kids could have gone to safety. Instead, they stayed there and were taunted repeatedly and shot by Klebold and Harris. Why? I'm overstating the point, I know, but it's important because that's what they were trained to do and that's what they were told to do by their teacher. Again, I do not want to diminish the response of Patty Nielsen. She was doing what she was told to do. We know as teachers and educators that we're very compliant people, that we will do as we are trained. We also know that we worry about things such as, what happens if I do that and it's not policy? What happens if I do that and it's not written down on a piece of paper somewhere? We always think like that. We're thinking about what ifs. This training is designed to give you tools that you can use in the case of an active shooter on your campus and permission to use those tools. These guys could have made it to safety, but they did what they were trained to do. As we take a look at the Virginia Tech case, I want you to take a look at passive response versus proactive response. Fatalities for a passive response are 28. Fatalities for a proactive response are two. So let's go through this. Cho was the guy who came in and shot up Virginia Tech. It was interesting with Cho because he went to a shooting range a few days before going on campus at Virginia Tech to practice the slaying. And here's how he did it. He went to the outdoor shooting range, and instead of putting the silhouette at the far end of the shooting range and practicing like most people do, he instead took multiple silhouettes and put them on the ground in a row down the lane of the, sh of the, uh, of the range. Then he took his weapons, and he walked along, and he shot at the silhouettes on the ground. He knew the response of the school. He knew how people were trained. He knew his victims were going to be on the ground waiting to die. He trained for it. The range master saw it. He saw the pre-indicator. He thought it was odd. He didn't report it. He didn't think much of it. Just, huh, that's odd. No report. Nothing. Cho comes on campus that morning, and I want you to see this is a hallway, and these are classrooms on either side of the hallway. This is a second story building. He chained the uh, point of exit on one end, walked down to the other end of the hallway, chained the doors here. Then he went into the first class. 
In classroom number one, there were 14 people there. He killed 10 and wounded two. Having done that, he strolled to the next room. They stayed down. They were passive as well. They did as they were trained. There were 19 people present in that room. He killed 12. He wounded six. By the time we get to room three, we have an interesting professor in room three. He was actually a Holocaust survivor, and he heard the guns. He didn't think it was a video production. He didn't think it was construction noise. He didn't think it was firecrackers. He knew that it was a weapon. And he said to himself, this ain't going to happen again. He took a student in his class, and the two of them barricaded the door by placing their bodies up against the door. And they held on, and they stalled the attacker. Also, he instructed the rest of his class to exit outside the window. They jumped from a second story window down to the concrete below. They survived. The two deaths that we have were the professor and the student who were barricading the door because the shooter shot through the door and killed them. But we have much less of mortality rate in that room. Cho tires of this one because he's lazy and because he's a coward and because he has twofold goal. I want to shoot as many people as I can before I die today. That was too hard. He goes to the next room. They hear the scuffle over here where they jumped and barricaded, and they start to barricade as well. And they have 13 present, five were killed, six were wounded. This was the first time they came, that Cho came to that room. Cho goes to room 200. There is no class there. Again, his goal cannot be fulfilled. He goes to the next room over here, room 205. 12 were present. None were killed. None were wounded. They were barricading the room effectively. There are several things to consider here. Your first room right here has the highest mortality rate because it was the first room. It makes sense. The first room is going to have the highest mortality rate. I wish I could tell you that we have a system or that someone has a system that will eliminate the carnage. There is no such system. When evil comes on the campus, people will be hurt, people will die. So they had a much slimmer chance of surviving. But they didn't counter, they didn't barricade, more people died. By the time we get to these people over here, and they're starting to understand what's going on, they were able to do more things, more tools. This is without training, guys. These people were not trained to barricade. These people were not trained to evacuate. They were not trained to counter and fight. They did it anyway. Why? They did it because it's ingrained in us as human beings to do three things in the case of danger. We're either going to run, we're going to hide, or we're going to fight. These guys took it upon themselves to take one of those options and more people were saved that day.